If the Goodwill isn't so good where you live, find the thrift shops that are independent. We are in the Tampa Bay area in Florida where Goodwills are bad, but other shops are great. So we're going to find some right now. Grace Tone. Oh, yeah. That Grace is the wife of John Frank. So that's a Francoma related thing. But she liked doing these things. That She did a line called Orbit. This is a sort of odd piece, but it always has this pattern on it, which I think is cool. And some of the pieces are really great. It does have. Aw, oh, too something. bad. And this is Weller here, a nice old piece, but again, it's got a hairline crack and a chip, but this is going to be, oh, it's got the arched mark, so that's probably 1920. Colorama. This was done by Myatt in England, that's why it's not as familiar here, but it definitely has that modernist coupe shape with no rims. Jim Beam bottles, big old cut glass pitcher down in the bottom. That's probably an older one. If you want to start chipping, it's unfortunate about the chip, but it is really a, yeah, it's a pretty color, and I like the design. Mm -hmm, me too. Oh, the Duncan teardrop. I always like this pattern. Yeah, the chain mail. Yeah, I always like those. They're beautiful. We get new things in all the time. Sure. That's quite a pewter collection of figures there. Mm -hmm. uh, the ladies who own the store, that's their fa part of their father's collection. Ah, interesting. Seminole Boulevard is definitely the place for the thrift stores in mid Pinellas County. Let's look at this one. We have not been to this one before. In fact, I just noticed it the other day. It's been here a while. It was voted the best by somebody, apparently. What's so. Oh, yeah, it's not the best on Sunday. Yeah, this looks like it could be something. Peace, love, and residue. Oh, rescue. Well, it's good they're rescuing animals. Okay, this place has some stuff. We'll see how it's priced. The first piece I see is really cool, but it's a bit expensive, although it's a good color, amethyst, and it's a nice pattern. It's Northwood, and you can see the orchids. 1910s. Very nice piece. It does have the right mark. The Northwood N, which we can show you here, has to have the line underneath the N in the circle, and the line must not touch the edges of the circle or else it's a reproduction. So this one's real. This is a Lennox egg. Oh, interesting. This one's actually nicely done, I would say. It seems to be Millefiori. I wonder if it was made overseas. It was made in Italy. See, I think this is good quality. $20, I know the Linux name right now is not super popular in the marketplace, but that might make this a deal. So I'm gonna take a look. $25 for six shows you about the value of these transferware plates from Germany from around 1920. They're perfectly nice. They're just not particularly valuable. They used to sell for a lot of money. The fact that they're owls may give them a chance in the marketplace again. These are bean. They did a lot of wildlife plates in the 1970s. They were good quality. They were limited to 15,000 each, which seemed like a fairly small number at the time, but now there are a lot on the market because they were collected, not used, so none of them ever broke, none were ever given to the kids, and they're all sitting in collections. Resin grapes, this is a little different kind because it's not mounted on the wood. And to be honest, I like that about it. And I think it's only $6. Oh yeah, I can use those for six bucks. I see a crack in one, but I think I have something that this might end up being a donor for anyway that I need to repair. So I'm taking it. Wow, look at this. I have two things. I have to actually get a basket in a thrift store. That's great. Here we go. Got a lot of different things. I'm not sure where Carl got off to. I got way late in the older stuff right away. This is a good chrome table, perhaps. This looks like it might actually be vintage. 80s vintage. And I see some other ones here. I don't see any obvious evidence of newerness because of the way it's joined and the fact that it doesn't have visible screws that are too modern. I don't see a price, however. Hmm. A lot of nice new things, too, but not things that I deal in. The displays are attractive, though, I have to say. 55 each is a pretty good price for these. I think these are 90s or newer, but there's three of them, and honestly, 
They were expensive new. Once again, we find the lesson, which is in Pinellas County, go to every thrift store other than Goodwill. There's just a lot of smaller thrifts like these that are well organized, have vintage as well as newer stuff, or benefiting local causes. And, you know, I, I know I talk harshly about Goodwill, and there's Goodwills that are great, but in this area, they're all dollar stores now, and it's just mostly boring. I know there's some of my viewers here who find stuff at them because they're able to hit them all the time, but I'd rather come somewhere like this and see an interesting range of vintage and newer items. Well, rats playing bells. I guess if ratatouille is a thing, anything is possible. There's Wendell Argus Forge, a set of amaranth pool balls. I like those. I don't see the price on them, though. Oh, oh this is something, actually, especially because it's a whole service for six. It's actually pretty well. Yeah, and I see they've got the pictures up here, too. Yeah, this is Marcrest um, made. Oh, I didn't even see it. I only yeah, it yeah, the plates usually have it. And this particular pattern is called Daisy and Dot because Daisy, Dot, Daisy, Dot as you go around the rim but they have a like right about 1950 i think yeah and um that was the they made other stuff but that was the one thing they were really known for there was one other brown pattern that i can't remember is similar that they also did that was popular sit and striker who five dollars yes i think we'll take that because it's a good color this is harker wear from the 1940s you know, there's some cute stuff here, and the prices are not bad on some of the older stuff. I don't need a lot more china and dinnerware unless it's really, really, really cheap. These cranberry glass spaces are 1990s Pilgrim glass. $30 minus a discount of some sort. I noticed they're willing if something is sat here for a while to give you a better deal. But all three of those are Pilgrim. They're all priced about what they were priced at new 30 years ago. You can see them a little better from this way. And then this set of dinnerware here from 1959. And I think this is, I want to say this is a Taylor Smith Taylor pattern. Let's see if we can find a piece that tells us for sure. It certainly seems like their shape. One of those LA Potteries, 1970s biscuit and bread holders there. Bread holders were a big thing in the 70s. A lot of people started baking and doing things at home again. Art and prints and mirrors, this is worth taking a moment for. Let's see what this is. Some sort of European scene. Fairly modern, actually. This is Paris. You see the relatively modern tour boats there. If there was any chance this peace sign was really old, I would buy it in a heartbeat. This bleaching, the way it's glued, this hook, just too new. $45 on the nice big oval mirror there with the roses. That looks like it's wood with gesso from the 40s or 50s. Good price. Royal Albert set. They would do one for every month, a trio, because this is for tea. You have your cup and saucer and your little biscuit plate. Happy birthday, August babies. A person who was actually famous at the time. I've seen this plate before. Madame Le Bru and her daughter. Very Parisian. $15. Doggy downers. <laughs> That's funny. My goodness. They'll do anything, won't they? <laughs> well, Glenn's parking space behind me here, he's the employee of the year. I think he's the manager or something. He's really hopping. They're adopting animals. They're running the store. And I see why they were voted number one by somebody because there's cool stuff and the prices were okay for what I got. Quality was good. I'm glad to be helped. I paid $5 more than I really wanted to, but I figured it's for a good cause. So the name of this place is We Maybe we'll find something. We didn't even have to look on the map to find this place because it just sort of jumps out at you. What's in there? Oh, I was looking more for the case itself. But yeah. This thing is so freaking heavy. That's awesome. I wonder what this... Uh, oh, so that's pyrite. I wonder what this revereware thing is. It's probably just something to... Oh, it's the cover for your pressure cooker. Oh, cool. $1 sale. I don't know that I'll find anything for a dollar. That's got some vintage, but... I think those are Japanese, but look at the cool graphic on the side here. I mean, this place goes on and on. There's tents with stuff, and here it is. Week! 
Terror, or Thrifton Collectibles. This guy's cool. He's one of the hillbillies they did in the late 40s, early 50s. There's his face. He's actually taking a bath. But he has a big old hairline crack in the back. Well, it says inside antiques and collectibles, and right off we've got everything from eight tracks to old record albums. I saw Cheap Trick in Tampa not that long ago. They were actually really fun. Sports-related jerseys and hats and such. Ooh. Understandably half off on these dolls. They're pretty, but they made a million. This is a line that some people collect from the 80s by Inesco. Plastic Dinosaur Land. 120 on the traditional styled. Plated. Made in China to look like a homemade Christmas tree, so beware, those are starting to come around. This is hand-painted and quite delicate and really seems to be in good shape. But again, not terribly old. 600 dollars on this version but those are not original to the 70s oops looks like that's their back area meet the tiger the saint in danger the saint was so popular that those books are not rare but they certainly do have the books it seems like everything is half off but i'm not really sure half off of what Lots of little perfumes. I mean, I see things in here that are probably worth spending some time on. Especially other kinds of resellers, I'm sure, could make money here. I don't see anything great that's vintage at this point, though. I get the feeling this is a place that you might find something sometime, but I'm not seeing anything today. Jay Strongwater, decorated with Swarovski crystals. Jay Strongwater is pretty recent collectible. The prices are really high, as you can see. They do sell for high prices. It's considered very fine and very well done. I have to say, when I look at the quality, I'm not so sure that this will hold up in the long run, but we'll see. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Oh, wait, that's 20, isn't it? Yeah. And it's because it's a demo. But, you know, this was a pretty popular album, so a lot of demos went out, actually. Especially because they, you know, they had their big success touring in Japan and recorded the album so nobody yeah. really knew them here so they sent out a ton of demos all right we got resale boutique here we're going to try this we're trying a bunch of new stuff in seminole florida that we haven't been to before there's also this down here it says dwellings repurposed home decor that may not be for us but on the other hand you never know some nice jewelry pieces i like the navajo cup but that's 135 the bling ring is fun but newer I like the filigree with the green stone, 185. This seems to be more a resale and repurposed store for sure. And it's very nice if you like this sort of bright and happy coastal living, which a lot of folks in Florida do, but it does not seem to have much old stuff, which is my gig. So I think we're going to go next door. All right, consigners, let's see here. Okay, so they do have vintage housewares here. The guy at the other shop suggested this for us, which was nice of him. And I have to say, I like coastal interior. I'm not into new stuff, but I thought they had a nice shop, and it was nice that they immediately understood that we were looking for something used and sent us here. But so far, most of this seems newer. It just depends on what they get. You know, some places get older donations and some don't, and a lot of this is consignment. They've won a lot of awards, and it does seem well organized again. I'm sure they have some interesting things in jewelry here or there. Marcosite ring from the 80s with the pink stone will be an example, second to the right on the second level. But I just don't really see a lot of old stuff, do you? Nah. It's nicely set up. Yeah, yeah, they're both good shops, but they're not really my thing. The very old stag bohemian carving that became the inspiration for an American pattern glass pattern, and here it is on a more modern piece for $5. This is actually hand-blown and polished, so it's a nice piece of glass. This would be for somebody, a very good pickup for five bucks. I see an Eileen Gray table through the window already, and we haven't even gotten into the store. In fact, the door is the other way. I parked in their side lot. Wow, $39. Mm, I think I might be buying that. 
This is second time around consignment boutique. And there we are, getting wind blown. The front is coming in. It is a perfect day here. Ooh, Hawaiian barbecue. That might be the place for lunch. Okay, a lot of clothing consignments on housewares. 70s rattan. You could get new covers for those and make pads. Some of the rattan seems like it has some age and is useful. This one I think is new, but there's no colors on well, that's made in Vietnam, but it actually, it's a good look. Okay, well, here is the other part. This looks like a lot of consignment that's recent, 50% off in the back. I mean, there's some nice things here if you could use them around the house, but I don't see old stuff here. So I think this might be a short trip. Now, these do sell for me. $69, you know, I usually get 85 to 95. That's not enough profit to make it worth getting, but it would sell. Here's something I like. It's funny, their older stuff seems to be in the front window. These, they say 60s. These are really probably more 1980s, but they definitely have the look, and they're asking 34 for the set. And then these, I collect these. They look like little Mercury space capsules. They're from about that time, too. Early 60s, this was when Hazel Atlas merged in Continental Can became the parent company and they make capri blue in the dots and i love the shapes of these they have six for 38 that's about six dollars each and that's a fair price for them i think i need two i don't need a whole set of six which brings us to a question about how do you price i would be inclined to sell these separately just because i think there's a market but um you know i understand why people want to sell sets so that they can keep their merchandising more cohesive Here's one last place we haven't been, and I've got to say, second time around, which is just down in the white building there, got a little bit of short shrift because my camera battery died. So I'm going to be careful through here because I want to show you what's in here. Christian thrift stores in Florida are not required to charge sales tax. Cups and saucers and some China service. Most of this is fairly new see what this chest over here is. It looks like some sort of a machinist chest. Handmade toolbox, $38. Not a bad price. Somebody who liked primitives might display it just like that and make a table with legs underneath it or turn it into a desk or a computer. Lots of interesting ways to use this. The Fenton piece that might be of interest in the hobnail is this box because it is a shape. It's in good shape. It's got the paper label, but it's $22 and honestly, that's way more than I'm going to pay for that. Culver glass, a set of six. Now, these are great. People really like these now. The pattern seems to be losing some of the gold, though, and that really matters a lot. So, also, what matters is knowing how much they are. And I am not seeing a price. There's a set behind here also with the gold that are nice, sort of highballs glasses. Again, losing a little bit of gold. And then there's this sand timer, similar to the one I just got with the silver deposit. This one has turquoise colored sand. That will go for one hour. And it's $7.50. And you know what? I still haven't sold the last one, but I think it's fantastic. And I'm going to buy this one too. If the condition is good. The silver fade can be sort of just splattery and all over, but it's a little faint on the one side. Hmm, that could matter. Colored cordials from the 60s and 70s will sell. Four for six dollars is a good price. That one probably glows under a black light. Hand-painted box here is Italian. Fourteen dollars, 1970s. That's just sort of sweet. It's got a chip, though. Seven-piece set for 17. Well, I mean, some of these are pretty viable prices, if you like them. This is German from the 1920s with a little bit of enamel beading, similar to Moriage from Japan. Courier and Ives was really big in popularity in the 50s, so much so that their reprints started being sold all over and framed, and then people started buying these dishes by Royal China. For a while, these were pretty saleable. They were never expensive. They made a lot of them. Some pieces in this line, the completer pieces, 
are still worth some money. Well, here's a 70s looking basket purse, but this has this interesting cut paper effect and it's seagulls. I kind of like this thing in this strange way. Reminds me of something my dear departed friend Barb Solomon would have bought when she was alive and well and had her shop on Orange Avenue in Orlando. $29.99, though, is about what I would charge. It's homemade, but well done. Damaged, of course, because Capo de Monte from the 60s and 70s with these flowers almost always is, but the damage is this leaf having been glued, so could be worse. Five dollars. So hard to find in good condition. They sold for a lot back then. Twelve fifty for the little Sorrento music box seems like a good deal. It's not an ancient one because it's got that really high polish and the colors, but this is probably 1980s with that finish. And now we'll hear the dulcet tones of Speak Softly Love. Hmm, that was brief. This should have a lid, but this is Moroccan Amethyst from the 60s. Great color. The twist is a neat style. Again, this Mercury space capsule look is because it's Hazel Atlas who did the Capri Blue Dots I showed you that I like. Always like this, too. They go great together. Oh, yeah, it's probably good quality, though. Is it heavy? This thing here. Okay, let's see. It is... Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's a lot, actually. I think they have these basically. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's got to be 15 or 20 pounds, right? That's pretty impressive for that. Oh, we've got a little old wardrobe here. This is a very basic one. This is inexpensive when new, just to be put in a closet. Very thin plywood, basic handles, cute holes, and a fake veneer. It's actually more of a printed finish. But you know what? It's actually a pretty cute piece. They put a new reflector in there. It could use proper mirror, but they did put shelves in. And you know, for $60, this is a lot of utility. These are from 1902, Hamilton G. Jacobs. These prints are interesting. It's right at the end of the horse and carriage days. A few years later, she might be driving an electric car. They're $15 each. I think they're something that, though they are old, may be something that were more popular in a period of collecting maybe 30 or 40 years ago. But let me see, because they are interesting. Oh, the banded uh, bowl. Yeah, that's probably Depression era, when they're fairly basic with just a little bit of trim, or even before that, Midwestern. Yeah, they're nice. I mean, they still sell like 20 bucks a piece is kind of a typical price on those, unless there's something special about it. No, oh, they have one of the Ma Agate peacocks inside here by Hager Pottery. It says to ask for assistance. I started to push the door open, but I just read the sign. Blue Italian picture here. That's a pretty color. They want 30 and 39, and I think that's enough money that I can leave them. I like the 70s little timer here. And the Gobel Monk, and we're seeing Ellie Smith Goose Girl, some of the usual stuff. A little hair receiver or two down at the bottom, and some English applied floral china. Plenty of cute things. Nothing I really desperately need to own, just because I have plenty of this sort of thing right now, and I'm trying to be a little bit selective. This may be Noritake's Azalea pattern. Let's look. It does say Nippon. It's more Mirror Brothers, and it is a rose rather than Azalea, but it is similar in style because it is made by Noritake in that same period where everything was hand painted. Metlock's California Rooster, one of their most popular patterns back in the 1950s and 60s. $25 for that stack. There's probably some way for a dealer to make money on those pieces if you sold them open stock. Open stock meaning one at a time, not all at the same time. I with my mom a long time ago. Oh really? You remember this place? I don't. The smell. Like it's weird. Oh. There's different stuff here. Thrift stores do sometimes have their aroma, yeah, don't they? That's interesting. Yeah, it's a little specific. I don't know why. I know people are making money on plush. I am a pretty much a casual browser of such things unless I see something that jumps right out at me. Same with clothes. But sometimes that happens. I have to agree with Carl, that was a little fetid back there, so ugh. But you know, sometimes that's part of the thrift shopping experience. Let's see what this 
pressed owl in plastic is, oh, well, that's not a terrible price that would probably sell. You know, you get sights and smells at thrift stores. But that's part of why you get deals sometimes, and we did find some deals today. This is not a deal at $99, but there are some things to buy here, and there have been some things to buy at all these stores, so now we have a new route to go thrifting again in the future here in Florida. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video, and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help, and we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.